Okay, so our topic for today will be on mandibular lateral displacement. And as I said, uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Paris and to be a part of the Genius Summit for the very first time. So I have been to uh, Paris several times over the past 30 years and the city never ceases to amaze me with its beauty and excitement. Like last night, we had an exciting time <laughs> with a rally outside the welcome reception, okay? So for those of you who have never been to the Philippines, I hope to welcome you to my country someday. Something our two countries have in common, beautiful women. <laughs> I currently teach at the University of the Philippines postgraduate program in orthodontics in Manila, and these are some of our faculty and students. So my lecture for today is on mandibular lateral displacement, its varied etiology and treatment modalities. As orthodontists, we are often confronted with the dilemma of how to treat such patients with MLD successfully. So this morning, I would like to share with you some treatment options available for such cases. Generally speaking, beauty of the face is associated with symmetry, but not even the most beautiful woman on earth has a completely symmetrical face, as you can see from this left and right composite photo of Angelina Jolie. As orthodontists, however, we strive to achieve the most ideal result by giving our patients a symmetrical face, and many times this can be a challenge. The common characteristics of MLD are the following. So as we all know, there is deviation of the chin, facial asymmetry, dental midline discrepancy, crossbite in the posterior region, high prevalence of internal derangement of the TMJ. How perceptive are we to facial asymmetry or MLD? This photo compilation shows us the varied degrees of facial asymmetry and correction. It was noted in this study that orthodontists were the most perceptive in identifying facial asymmetry as compared to dentists and lay people. And so the attainment of the best facial aesthetic appearance for a given patient is a primary goal of orthodontic treatment. The evaluation of a patient's frontal symmetry is the most critical aspect of diagnosis because this is the most appreciated view for any individual. Individuals who report for orthodontic treatment are often associated with facial asymmetry that may be greater than the acceptable norms. Such asymmetries may have a skeletal or dental etiology. The diagnosis, treatment planning, and the mechanics for the asymmetric patient require the identification of the cause of the asymmetry. A careful differential diagnosis together with a thorough treatment plan can ensure successful treatment outcomes in the management of such cases. Now the major causes of facial asymmetry are the following. We have your congenital deformities such as hemifacial microsomia, developmental asymmetries such as unilateral chewing or postural habits, and acquired facial asymmetry such as TMJ ankylosis, facial trauma, and facial tumors. Based on the structures involved, facial asymmetry has been classified into four major categories. So you have skeletal, dental, muscular, and functional. Hemimandibular hyperplasia. This is where half of the entire mandible is enlarged three-dimensionally. There is no shifting of the chin point. With hemimandibular elongation, there is elongation of either the condyle or the ramus in the vertical plane or the mandibular body in the horizontal plane or combinations of both which leads to shifting of the chin towards the opposite side. Dental asymmetry is associated with disproportions in the distribution of teeth along the arch. The various reasons for such malalignment of teeth are premature loss of deciduous teeth, congenitally missing teeth, presence of supernumerary teeth, and tooth size uh, discrepancies or asymmetries. Muscular asymmetry may result due to an abnormal muscle structure or activity on one side of this face, such as hypertrophy of the masseter on one side of the face giving the appearance of facial asymmetry. 
A functional asymmetry occurs as a result of functional deviation of the mandible in response to occlusal prematurities. Such cases include presence of constricted arches or unilateral posterior crossbites. Often, a single malpose tooth may result in shifting of the mandible during closure from centric relation to centric occlusion. In the clinical examination of MLD, the patient should be evaluated in the frontal view. A gross evaluation of the facial proportions can be done by dividing the face into equal fifths. Along with this is an inspection of the symmetry between the bilateral gonial angles. The dental midline of the face should pass through the point between the eyebrows, the dorsum, the tip of the nose, the philtrum, and the chin point. Facial midline can be assessed by extending a wire or floss from the forehead to the chin. A true facial asymmetry due to a skeletal cause maintains the same relation both at centric relation and centric occlusion. The dental midline should coincide with both the arches with the facial midline. The evaluation of the concordance between the midlines should be made in various positions of the mandible, such as the mouth open, centric relation, initial contact, and centric relation. The cant of the maxillary and mandibular planes should be evaluated. The patient is made to bite on a tongue blade and is assessed for parallelism with the interpupillary plane. The threshold for recognizing an occlusal cant is four degrees between the plane of occlusion and the interpupillary line. The patient should also be evaluated for the amount of gingival display on both sides of the midline as the patient is made to smile. The lower border of the body of the mandible should also be assessed for bilateral symmetry. The patient is made to perform the various functional movements such as opening of the mouth, protrusive movements, lateral movements, and any imbalance between the two sides is recorded. An accurate registration of the centric relation must also be made. Deflection of the mandible is movement away from the midline during opening without return to center during the movement. If there is mechanical obstruction, the deviation or deflection is generally in the direction of the involved TMJ. A note of the maximum interincisal opening is made along with the interocclusal gap. Tempor temporomandibular joint evaluation is done to check any symptoms of clicking, popping, tenderness to rule out any TMJ disorder. The routine frontal relaxed smiling profile view and oblique view photographs of the patients are taken. The photographs are assessed for any gross asymmetry between the two sides of the face. Disproportions between the two sides of the jaws or joints can also be noted through the panoramic radiograph. Supplemental posteroanterior cephalograms are taken to record the degree of facial asymmetry. The diagnostic measurements made in the PA cephalogram are the following. The occlusal plane in the MLD is inclined superiorly or in the shifted side, indicating that the vertical height of the shifted side is less than the contralateral side. The mandible rotated three-dimensionally accompanied by a tilting of the frontomandibular plane in the same direction. The condyles are shifted to the contralateral side, and this kind of mandibular rotation can cause strong compression on the shifted side of the condyle, and also internal derangement of the TMJ, producing osteoarthritic changes of the condyle. The canting of the occlusal plane in MLD also causes a disproportion in the gum line when smiling. So our treatment objective is to therefore try to reposition the shifted mandible to correct the canting and the gum line by doing intrusion and extrusion mechanics. So dentofacial asymmetry is due to one or a combination of factors. It can be dental, it can be skeletal, functional, and corresponding treatment for each are the following. For asymmetry due to dental problems, we can either use elastics uh, for mild cases or do asymmetric extraction for severe cases to treat the problem. For functional types of mandibular shift, 
occlusal prematurities causing the mandible to shift can be treated by selective grinding or orthodontic treatment. A lateral functional shift may occur because occlusion of the mandible in centric relation causes the opposing cusp to contact in a cusp-to-cusp -cusp position. Because the patient is unable to occlude with the teeth in such a position, the mandible is shifted laterally to allow the contact of more occlusal surfaces and to improve function. So the management of posterior crossbites in pre-adolescence are the following. So we have equilibration to eliminate the mandibular shift, expansion of the constricted maxillary arch, unilateral repositioning of the teeth, and an onlay type of functional appliance. So here we have a case treated with an onlay type of an appliance. The patient is five years old. So notice the shifting of the mandible to his left side. Intraorally, you can see anterior and left posterior crossbite. This is the difference in the centric relation and centric occlusion indicating a functional shift in the mandible. Okay, so now we have to fabricate an onlay appliance for this patient. First, we take an impression of the upper and the lower teeth. Take the bite in the most comfortable retruded mandibular position or edge-to-edge -edge position if possible. We mount the casts in the articulator. We do a wax up of the lower primary first and second molars. So this is just an example in the upper arch. No? So we take an impression of the waxed up teeth with the rubber impression material using Exaflex. We remove the rubber impression material we remove the wax, we put the resin, and we put it back again to form the onlay. So this is how the onlay looks with self-curing acrylic or tempron, and we put it in the rubber impression material and adapt it to the lower working cast. We cement the acrylic on the occlusal surfaces of the lower primary teeth with glass ionomer or Fuji Ortho. So these are the treatment uh, progress photos. Uh, MLD pre-op, we have onlay installation, and after one month, after three months, after four months, after six months, and after eight months. So as you can see, after eight months, it has already balanced out, and the MLD has been corrected. So the overlay gets worn down over time, so you need to resurface it or add acrylic to the onlay. No? Uh, as you wait until you see the bite improving and the patient's D's and E's eventually exfoliate, and you see the permanent central incisors erupt with a positive overjet. So this is uh, at the start of treatment and after eight months. So very simple appliance. For skeletal mandibular shift, we have the following treatment options. We have bilateral sagittal split osteotomy, genioplasty, distraction osteogenesis, and hybrid functional appliances. This case shows us a combination of surgery and orthodontic treatment to correct the MLD problem. This is the pre-surgical orthodontic treatment followed by intraoral vertical ramus osteotomy and straightening genioplasty. So pre-surgical orthodontic treatment or decompensation was done prior to surgery and post-surgical orthodontic treatment using elastics was used to detail the occlusion. So there is marked improvement of facial asymmetry after treatment. Skeletal facial asymmetry due to a congenital problem can be treated with a hybrid functional appliance to modify growth. Another more radical option would be to use a distractor. So early diagnosis is fundamental in order to intercept and correct abnormal growth, avoiding the development of a skeletal asymmetry. Skeletal jaw asymmetries can be treated by surgery, surgical therapy only at the end of growth. In case of slight asymmetry, however, early intervention aimed at the correction of asymmetry itself is recommended. For more severe cases of skeletal asymmetry in the growing child, distraction osteogenesis is recommended. Acquired facial asymmetry 
are best treated with surgical intervention, such as cases of TMJ ankylosis, facial tumors, lateral displacement due to trauma. MLD is also associated with occlusal canting. There are many treatment options available, such as, in this case, asymmetric bracket positioning. The use of temporary anchorage devices, or TADs, can be used to perform differential intrusion and extrusion procedures, achieving good results in the correction of canting and asymmetry. We can use either an elastic chain, coil spring, or elastic ligature thread, together with a TAD for intrusion mechanics. We can also use a spring-like wire assembly or a rhythmic wire together with a mini screw to produce either intrusion or extrusion mechanics. This technique was advocated by a good friend, Dr. Yang Gok Park from Korea. For intrusion, as you can see in the uh, illustration, uh, an 019 by 025 TMA wire is used bent into the following configuration prior to its insertion to produce intrusion. For extrusion, an 016 stainless steel wire is bent into the following configuration prior to insertion. Modifications of the rhythmic wire with helices or loops can be added to gain more flexibility with the wire. A TPA and LHA is recommended to prevent untoward lateral movement of the posterior teeth, such as buccal flaring of the upper molars during intrusion. I sometimes also use a mini splint made out, made out of simple self-curing acrylic to help guide the mandible to the correct position while I'll do intrusion and extrusion mechanics. The splint offers a bite block effect and helps in the intrusion on the other side. An alternative to TADS is the multi-loop edgewise arch wire technique or the Miao technique. No? So I was fortunate enough that my professor uh, taught me this technique which was developed in Japan no? by Dr. Sato. So here in this uh, technique, it enables uh, one to create intrusion and extrusion mechanics on the wire by bending loops to the wire. No? Usually 016 by 022 or 017 by 025, blue LG loy or stainless steel wires are used for this purpose. So as you can see from this illustration of the wire bending procedure, one side produces intrusion and the other side produces extrusion, correcting the canting or the MLD. So this is an MLD case treated with Miao. So at the start of treatment, there is canting and midline deviation. Intrusion and extrusion mechanics with the wire loops are used plus the elastics to guide the mandible. The short anterior elastics, usually 316 6 ounces, help to control the vertical relationship of the incisors due to the bite opening effect of the wire activations. So there is marked improvement in facial asymmetry and occlusal canting after treatment. Okay, now this patient had orthodontic treatment at the age of seven years old up to 14 years old for crowding. She had four first three molars extracted. When she was at that age, there, were, there was no sign of MLD. But at the age of 17, the patient gradually noticed the shifting of the mandible to the left side. So this is a posterior anterior cephalogram taken at the age of 11 and at 23 years of age. So there is shifting of the mandible, the lower midline deviation over time. At age 23, the patient had a class three molar and canine relationship on the right, class one molar and canine relationship on the left, and a 5.5 millimeter midline shift to the left. Now, the third molars in this case were the cause for the MLD. No? The third molars were implicated in the extrusion of the upper second molar, molars causing the mandible to shift. The third molars as they erupt cause a squeezing out effect on the second molars, creating the canting. This is another case where the third molars were implicated in the MLD because of the squeezing out effect of the second molar. 
This case was treated non-extraction except for the impacted upper third molars. The multi-loop edgewise arch wire technique was also used to shift the mandible and the midline to the corrected position. So there is now marked improvement in the bite using the meow. So this is before treatment and after treatment with the third molars already extracted. Before and after, before and after. An alternative to TADS or meow or even surgery for MLD is a new wire system developed by Dr. Eric Liu of Taiwan, which is now being marketed by MEM, no? the yin and yang arch wire. So the yin and yang arch wire is basically made out of titanium molybdenum alloy or TMA. It, it comes in two sizes, the 017 by 025 for an 018 bracket, bracket slot and an 018 by 025 size for an 022 bracket slot. It comes in 100 degrees for the correction of the cant in the beginning and 60 degrees to maintain the correction. It comes in two types for both the upper and the lower arches. Also, a TPA and LHA is recommended during treatment. So this is a case that was presented by Dr. Eric Liu in his journal using the yin and yang arch wire. So this was an extraction case since the patient was bimaxillary protrusive. So after space closure, what Dr. Eric Liu did was use the yin and yang wire used to correct the canting. So as you can see from the images, he also put a TPA and an LHA. So as you can see from the before and after, there is a marked improvement in facial asymmetry and occlusal plane canting without the need for TADS, complex wire bending techniques, or even surgery. So this is a very promising new technique in MLD correction. So this is just one patient that uh, we used a yin and yang arch wire with just before I came to Paris. So it was placed on June 4, 2019, and in just three weeks after using the yin and yang wire, the canting was already markedly improved. So to summarize, the following treatment options are available for each type of asymmetry problem. So again, for growing children, we have functional appliances as a choice. We have distraction osteogenesis. For adults, we have orthodontic camouflage or orthognatic surgery. And for functional asymmetry problems, we have occlusal equilibration or the use of splints. So merci beaucoup. That ends my lecture. Thank you.